Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We begin in sandbox mode because there is one more thing that a comment insisted that I test. Uh, Jimmy Miguchi said that I should test the idea that the MLI layers are the problem and that I should not have MLI layers on the command pod. This makes no sense to me because command pods can have tanks inside of them that have MLI layers and also if the MLI layers were coded to cause a problem with the heat tolerance of the pod, they should just not have the MLI layers on the pod, right? They're basically tricking us, thinking that we can put those on and then it causes the pod to explode. Not only that, but we've also seen that the MLI layers do not cause the critical problem. In other words, when we're coming in, it seems like it only has a problem when we have the center of mass offset on, and if the center of ma mass offset is not on, then it seems to be fine. And also, we have had uncrewed tests where even with the center of mass offset on, it survived. So I don't think it's the MLI layers, and if it is the MLI layers, they should probably just exclude them from the command pod, which uh, at least with a tag system should be easy, or they could just do that manually by a configuration patch. Uh, I can do that myself if they can't. Uh, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, uh, but we'll try it. I mean, I am here to do the experiments. So this is Sandbox, and we're just going to launch it, and we are going to try this theory out. So there's currently no MLI layers on the pod, and we'll see if it acts differently than the other tests. Simple as that. Uh, this is the version with the uh, the heat shield slightly clipped in. I think I'll tweak it out uh, just a little bit as I had it originally. So sort of more like that, uh, which is how we have been using it when the two Kerbals perished, of course. So we are going to test this theory out. Okay, let us go. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Booster set. And transfer. Okay, we have captured. And we will return. Well, it'll be nighttime side, not a whole lot to see. Yeah, there was actually boil off of the hydrogen and oxygen this time because there's no MLI layers on the pod, but not too bad, really. We could certainly deal with that. Okay, and that was boil off because they were locked, so it wasn't using it for the fuel cells. All right, uh, service module separation. Still oversized heat shield, basically the setup that we had in the series with the career mode. And we'll have the scent mode on, and we'll have it at uh, 20 degrees. We'll just go with 20 degrees. It might still be safe, it might not, but uh, we'll take a look at whether it is an overheating indicator, and that's about it. We could do a more serious test to really give this theory a go, but we'll keep it consistent. Technically, I think Sebastian's was 24 degrees. We still seem to get overheating with 20 degrees on the previous test, so this is probably good enough. So, let's see about this MLI theory. Piece that got of me, I mean, you put MLI on something. It, really, it's supposed to be for the tanks inside, not for the structure. Okay, we're starting to get in it here. Um, it's overheating. Uh. So no. No, it wasn't the MI layers. <laughs> I mean, I know in real life you wouldn't put MI layers on the outside of the vehicle, okay? But, as far as our problems are concerned, it wasn't the MLI layers. Right? Right. Okay. Um... And, again, the COM offset would be the critical thing, it seems. 
that that seems to be the thing that causes the problem. And that means that there's something wrong with the way that the heating is being simulated because this was not an issue in previous versions. Okay, back in career mode we have a lot of science because we just did those Jupiter flybys, the Jupiter um, Jovian moon flybys. And uh, I wanted the upgrades to the Hydrolox engine, so we'll get that. I don't know if I'm going to use the HM7, but we'll see. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot that I actually want. I guess we'll get more researcher efficiency or something. Engineer efficiency would always be good. Keeps giving me those. And there's a balloon tank upgrade and an isogrid tank upgrade here. Okay, well, we use those. Well, instead of just constantly upgrading things, if we get the best one, that would be the easiest thing. So we don't have to keep retooling stuff. I mean, ultimately, we'll see about the nuclear stuff, but that's separate. We don't really have contracts that justify that yet. But, yeah, we might as well unlock everything else that I might want first. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna put it into commercial spaceflight era material science. Let's take a look at the pod that we're currently building to see if there's anything I want to fix. I mean, I can just so that we can rule it out completely, remove the MLI layers on here. It seems like the boil off isn't too bad. Um, we lose some, but it's not a big deal, so I'll just let that go, you know, just so I don't have to keep hearing about it because somebody might feel like I did the test wrong or something, I don't know. As far as the mix in the service module for the fuel cells, it doesn't matter. At this point, we're just not going to burn the Hydrolox engine to depletion anyway, so I'm not going to change the mix there. We keep being a little bit heavy. Even though this is light. Maybe that's because we put the Kerbals in? Let's see... Yeah, putting the Kerbals in makes it heavier. Okay, so that's planning for two. I can't see any buildings. I need to fix the clouds somehow. But I don't usually fill around with environmental visual enhancements, so... It's tough. So we are getting... We're starting to get our boost here, and boy do we need it. How's our training situation? Again, we'll only risk one. And mission training expires August 15th for Muhammad here. So that's pretty good. Uh, Sarolta will complete proficiency in Apollo in ages and ages. Um, why is it taking our pilot so long to finish that. Herman? Herman the Kerman? Uh, anyway, um... Harman. Borg. Um, okay, low stability options are Gloria and Barbell. Then again, that training is taking forever. We're gonna go with Barbell Herman. Just cuz. Alright, so we've got a third Kerbal. And that means we have to pay for training, which will probably be expensive. May 22nd. Roll out. Oh, we can roll it out without breaking our bank. That's nice. Oh, I take it back. Let me just get it into daylight. And then we'll launch. We'll try it again. Given our new information, there will be no lifting re-entry. If the Kerbal perishes this time, I'm going to use my pod and I will configure it <laughs> so that it survives. Okay. Ignition. And launch. It's got all the engines. Alright, looking good past Mod 3. Okay, G Force mitigation. Booster set. Very nice. 
launch escape system set. Okay. Okay, making orbit here. And I'll leave this suborbital. Alright. Per the plan. And... Yep, under CS on. Separation. And ignition. And that's good enough. Alright. Let's go to the moon. Again. <laughs> I've had a lot of experience with this particular launcher now. Okay, that's good enough. Eh, yeah, close enough. Ignition. Okay, it's coming in. And... Okay, that's fine. I mean, obviously all this is pretty standard now. It's just the very end that I'm worried about. So, yeah. Well, good luck, Mohammed. We do end up with uh, more Hydrolox Delta V than we need on the service module, but that will give us an opportunity to change inclination or stuff like that if necessary to rendezvous with the lander. So, uh, the Four hypergolic engines will be reserved just for the return. Of course, we'll be using some of that fuel for RCS, but we have plenty of that. Uh, but um, the spare Delta V that we have in the Hydrolock system will be just for rendezvous, and we won't use it for the return at all. Okay, we are separating. And ignition. So yeah, it's about 1,000 meters per second. Now, once we start using the Hydrolock system, we get a little bit more than that. But basically, that's rendezvous fuel if we need it. Ideally, when we capture, we'll be getting into the same orbit. But just in case, we need to do some sort of correction. Okay, it was a good burn and a happy little orbit. We have 120 left, but that was because I did sort of a wild radial thing to control our orbit there. Um... In real life, they actually did two burns, but that's fine. Everything is good, and we'll shut that off and not use it again. Okay, well, um, contract-wise, we are supposed to hang out for 20 hours, so we will hang out for 20 hours. Okay, well, that should be more than 20 hours. I mean, I don't know if it's checking or not, but let's do the return home safely and... If the contract has a problem with completing, we'll just force complete it, I think. I mean, I have video evidence and everything. Hey, okay, ignition. Up, up, up. Too much, too much. Okay, 60 kilometers as usual. So long to the moon. Oh, well, we're pointed straight at it. But nighttime side again. Okay, basic operations time. Uh, unlocking. And we have the same amount of leftover hydrogen and oxygen there after the boil off. So that is what we discovered in Sandbox as well. I can mitigate the force. We've got 378. I could bring the orbit down right now. But you know what? I'm also actually going to do that. <laughs> I I I don't want to lose our third Kerbal. I'll try that too. I mean, we've got our results. I mean, so we have to keep the periapsis up, though. Gotta make sure of that. Just taking the edge off the heat. That's all. Okay, well, I'll spare the rest. Okay. Mainly so that we can turn here. Oh, are we, uh... Free camera. Okay. Alright, separation. Oh no, we have... Uh, it took the MMH from here. I really just need to lock this fuel. 
Oh, the scent mode is off. It shouldn't use too much on the scent anyway. Pretty sure I set the fuel priority right, but I'll have to check that again. Okay, we're in the atmosphere. No lifting stuff. Three mile, five G's ish. We're not gonna skip out. Which is also different from previous versions. The heat shield is slightly oversized compared to an Apollo heat shield, though, so that might be a little bit different. Yeah, no problems at all. Who needs the lifting re-entries and all that business? Here it is extra G-Force. That part, but not that much. Not the nicest we could make it for our Kerbals, but I don't think there was even a G-Force bar appearing there. Will the contracts fulfill? That's the next thing. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to 6 meters per second-ish. Okay, and... Normal recovery. I think uh, that little notification thing was flashing to say that we had, in fact, completed the contracts, but let's see. July 4th, 2010. We're the European Space Agency, though, so we don't actually care about that particular date, but... Okay, well, uh... Mohammed uh, will retire no earlier than 2020, which is great. On leave until November, though. So, yeah. 11,000 funds recovered. Level 2. As befitting somebody who's flown around the moon. And, yeah, those contracts are no longer active. So finally, finally, we get to pick up first human moon landing. But it's not with humans. We can't fulfill that. We have no humans. Um, first Kerbal moon landing. Uh, planet flag on the moon. Well, that's going to be complicated, but at least one element seems fine. We'll need more money to build stuff, but then again, we're uh, accumulating funds pretty quickly, so let's queue that stuff up. Okay, we should have enough for another rocket now. But this time, it's no good without a lander. We haven't really tested the lander. Okay, that's still under construction. Let's build the lander as well now. These days we can have 1,800 people working on the launch complex and we still accumulate money, which is nice. I had originally designed the Lunar Lander using the same service module, basically. Well, same basic setup that we have on the Mark 1-3 command pod instead of this arrangement. But I decided that this was a little bit better just in case this had to hang out around the moon waiting for our crew to come, right? So this leaves it uh, hypergolic. The, this stage will capture around the moon, but then this is all hypergolic so it can wait. So that's why it's set up like that. But originally I had uh, it with a hydrolock system. I hope they're properly trained for landing. It seems a little bit weird that is basically instantaneous. We have to unlock for 95,000 here, but that's just unlock credit. That's the lander can, landing strut, and the Apollo... Oh, we don't want the Apollo sys uh, docking system. We want the other one. The 
propellant only docking system because we needed it lighter. I mean, we probably didn't need it lighter, but I like all the margin I can get, so. For now, we are going to have it lighter. I, I think there might have been some tooling there that I had to do. Um, yeah, there's some tooling I have to do here. Uh, just the little radial tanks. Okay. We have all the unlock credit anyway. Okay, well, before I hire some more engineers to speed things up, we're going to hire some more Kerbals. Whoa, that went off. Um, these two are only going to get proficient in Apollo by 2012. Don't know if we can speed up training at all. I think I vaguely remember there was something, but anyway. Um, let's hire some more Kerbals, though, because their downtime is going to be pretty severe, too. So, Graham Brooks, Graham Brooks. Okay, lots of courage and low stupidity scientists, but they all seem to be taking forever anyway, so. Graham Brooks it is. Thomas O'Connor, well that's pretty straightforward. Let's get six all together. Let's give Heidi. Low stupidity is better. Alex de Jong. Heidi. Low stupidity it is. Okay, and all of them have to be trained. December of 2012. Our program ends in 2016, so we're okay, but we need to land once and then land two more times for the targeted moon landings. What if we had three landers but only one pod? <laughs> and we just brought all, all of them back at the same time. But we can't pick up the targeted one until we finish the first one though. Alright, so I'll leave it here this time. We finally managed to get our Kerbal back after a um, moon mission. And we have one moon mission, a complete moon mission, ready to go. And another one under construction. It is March 15th. We are waiting for some training to happen. Um, basically, we have to wait until next year for Sarolta to be done. Uh, Muhammad is free, probably needs the mission training again, but we'll do those in parallel. So we will send two. Well, I mean, we need two for the lander anyway, uh, so that one can stay with the mission and the other one can land. It'll just be helpful. Uh, technically, we could remote control them, but I don't want to do that at all. And of course, we need to do it for the science. I hope the lander can take just, uh, well, it only takes one Kerbal, so it must have science that only one Kerbal can do. And then, so basically, we have it lined up uh, one mission, two mission, three missions. And yeah, we will build them and try to send them on their way. For now, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.